So this is our data set. So today we're going to demonstrate how to run correlation analysis in JASP. So we have here our data set. The data set that we have are a bunch of variables which we refer to as uh, these are measures of personality traits. So if you are not familiar with this, this is also referred to as ocean because if you take a look at the first letters of these words, they can form ocean. O-C-E-A-N, ocean. And these are actually personality traits. Okay, so to run this, well, first of all, I didn't really specify um, what is the objective of the study. We're just here to sort of examine the association among these traits. We did not forward any particular hypothesis. You can just imagine that this data set is one part of a bigger data set and that at a certain point in the research study, uh, you needed to simply examine the associations among these five personality constructs. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, all right, so to run correlation in JASP, all you have to do is to click on regression and then choose correlation matrix. So we have here on this side uh, our options and then we have here on this side the table. So let's begin with two variables. So let's say, for example, neuroticism, and I want to correlate that with extraversion. So let's try to make sense of these variables first. So neuroticism is essentially a trait that pertains to you know, individuals having difficulties in managing their emotions. Uh, they're more likely to experience anxiety, you know, stuff like that. And then extraversion probably are familiar with that particular construct as so being the tendency to uh, channel their energy more outwardly so they would appear as sociable, outgoing. Anyway, so this is our output and you can see here that there are, so it's in a matrix form. So you can notice that in this column you have neuroticism and extraversion and in these rows you also have neuroticism and extraversion forming this kind of matrix. What you're running here is Pearson R correlation, but if you want to run Spearman rank, you also have options here and here. So if you click those, uh, the output will also show, but we don't need that. Uh, we know that these are continuous variables measured using standardized scales. Uh, so we are confident that these come from interval scales, so we can use Pearson R correlation. Now, what I normally do, and this is also what I observe uh, in published materials, normally they no longer report the p-value. So that makes this table more simple. So what I usually do is I uncheck report significance. But the next question would be, how do we know if this is a significant relationship? What I do is I click on flag significant correlations. And when I do, if it's significant, there should be an asterisk here. So the asterisk, they would vary. Uh, is it one, two, or three asterisks? Uh, and the meaning of those can be found here. Uh, if you have one asterisk, that means to say that uh, the correlation coefficient that you're seeing is significant at 0 0.05. If you have two, significant at 0 0.01. If you have three, significant at 0 0.001. So I have three here, so uh, negative point. 350 is significant at 0 0.00, even at a very strict p-value. So essentially, that is that is the result. So what does this result mean? Uh, it means to say that, so we have a significant correlation. So we know that the relationship is not the same as 0 or not equivalent to 0. It's negative which means to say that individuals who score high in neuroticism are more likely to score low in extraversion. Uh, and how do we describe the relationship? So at 0.35, so we can say that there is a moderate negative relationship between neuroticism and extraversion. Let's add up the others. So if I add openness to experience, so from one correlation coefficient, I now have three coefficients. And why is that? We now have three pairings. What are those pairings? Neuroticism and extraversion. This is their coefficient. Neuroticism and openness to experience. This is their relationship. Extraversion and openness to experience. This is their relationship. 
So if there is no association, no relationship between neuroticism and openness to experience, right? With a coefficient of negative 0 0.01, it's not significant, but there is a positive relationship between extroversion and openness to experience. So with a coefficient of 0.267, it is positive. Uh, and what does that mean? That means to say that individuals who are more open to experience are also more likely to be extroverted, which makes sense. And then let's add another. We now have six coefficients because we now have six pairings. By the way, you might be wondering what does this mean? Why is it that the cell here is empty? Because this is the comparison or this is the relationship of neuroticism with neuroticism. And we all know every time that you correlate a variable but with itself, the correlation will always be one. So that's already a given and that's why they left those cells empty. Uh, and then finally, let's add conscientiousness in our matrix. So there, that is our matrix. So let's try to examine which of the traits have a relationship with one another. Neuroticism also seems to be negatively associated with eagerness, although there is a, just a weak association with a co coefficient of uh, 1.34. So that means to say that individuals who, are, who have high neuroticism are more likely or are less likely to be agreeable. But again, the relationship is weak. And then conscientiousness and neuroticism. Conscientiousness, uh, what is conscientiousness? It's, it's a trait of individuals who want to plan, who are careful, who are deliberate. Are you that kind of person? You plan everything. You're very organized. You want to make sure that you, you do what you should be doing. You are responsible. If that's the case, then you are conscientious. And those who are conscientious are less likely to be neurotics, no, uh, neurotic rather, as this coefficient suggests. Uh, other meaningful associations, there is also a weak, by the way, this is a moderate relationship. There's also a weak uh, association or relationship between agreeableness and openness to experience and also a weak correlation between conscientiousness and agreeableness. Uh, what other options do we have here? If you do not like this display, the matrix one, you can also do it in pairs. So if you click on display pairwise table, then you can have this. So it's just displaying it in pairs. But personally, what I would suggest is just, let's just stick with the matrix format because typically publications in our discipline uses this format. So the earlier you become accustomed to looking at tables in a matrix format, the better. So that you do not get confused when you examine journals reporting zero order correlation values um, in this particular format. So my suggestion is that let's just stick with this. Okay, so uh, that's it. So I hope that you learned something new for those who are not yet familiar with JASP. If you're wondering how to run this in Jamovi, it's exactly the same. Uh, probably there are some minor changes. Okay, so that's it. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this video or if you learned something new.